During the final stages of formation of a star like our own sun, becoming steadily denser and denser, it also starts to spin faster and faster. Result of this spin, some of the gas and heavier materials accumulated around the equator of the star starts to spread out from the star. And the further this matter gets from the star, and the heavier that matter is, the more the spin of the star on its axis is actually reduced. Eventually, the star is no longer contracting in on itself, a rotation no longer flinging out matter into an orbit around the star. The star has reached a relatively stable point in its life cycle. At this point, our solar system looks a little bit like Saturn, with a large gassy object in the middle and a disk of material spreading out from it. However, in this case, the disk is far thicker and the density of the disk increases the closer you get to the plane of the star's equator. This ring of material is sometimes called an accretion disk because, like Saturn, if any of the material gets too close to the gassy giant in the middle, the gravitational forces will suck them back in towards it, and the gassy giant will grow larger as a result. However, the disk is probably better called a protoplanetary disk, since it's from this disk of material that the planets will eventually form. There are now two key forces operated in our newly created solar system the pull of gravity from the star, and the nuclear reaction starting to take place within the star itself. Now, the atoms which are left behind in the newly formed star are almost pure hydrogen. However, this also means that this protoplanetary disk is made from the heavier elements like iron, as well as some of the lighter gases, including significant amounts of hydrogen. These elements are now orbiting the star, with the force of gravity trying to suck them back in, at their orbiting speed, holding them generally in place. At the same time, the nuclear reaction starting to play, take place inside the star is generating a solar wind, which bumps into these elements, making up the protoplanetary disk, pushing them further and further out from the star. However, the wind doesn't actually affect all elements in the protoplanetary disk to the same degree. The lighter the elements are, the more proportional the push is on them, and as a result, the further they tend to orbit from the star. In the hot zone, close to the star, where the heavier elements dominate, we start to get the conditions for the formation of the rocky planets. The elements in the protoplanetary disk also don't orbit perfectly at set distances from each other in perfect orbits. The result of this, a great many collisions happen between the elements. Sometimes they'll bounce off each other, making their orbits even more erratic. Sometimes they'll actually clump together, being held together by chemical and electrostatic forces. Eventually, some of these tiny clumps will have so many particles in them, they form an object maybe about a metre across. When this happens, the gravitational force they create will now have an effect on other nearby particles. As a result, these would grow in size quicker and quicker and quicker, until they reach about one kilometre across. At this stage, these planetesimals are now so large, exerting such great forces compared to everything else in the local vicinity, that their growth accelerates, sucking up anything nearby and adding to the mass of the planetesimal. However, it's important to realise this process isn't irreversible. Any stage during their formation, a collision between two similarly sized objects is likely to shatter both objects and the process starts again. What this does mean is that after about 100,000 years, we have a limited number, perhaps around 100 rocky objects or oligarchs, smaller than our moon, orbiting the inner part of the solar system, along with a great many, uh, many smaller planetesimals. These objects have basically cleared the inner part of the solar system of anything smaller, and now in relatively stable orbits around our star. However, these orbits aren't perfectly stable. The final stage the formation of the rocky planets is quite dramatic, and we'll look at that next.